Uh. Okay, so actually I, I will start from a revision of last lecture. Uh, and at the same time, I want to tell you the books which we are uh, commonly using throughout our lecture, in addition to the textbook specified. So these are the two books, very important books, which we can follow. And uh, uh, this is Rocket Propulsion Element, ninth edition, uh, George P. Sutan. This is basic text. So um, this is one book. Another is Fundamental of Rocket Propulsion by D.P. Mishra. Uh, this is a professor in my institute, the institute where I am now. So this is also another important book uh, and the recent uh, books. So uh, if you can download, you can download it from uh, LiveGene or other means. If you are not capable to download it, then you can uh, just tell me, I'll send you a soft copy of these two books. So uh, actually this is uh, uh, last lecture. Actually last time we have seen uh, what are the gravitational fields, how we can uh, drive the equation of gravity and how the gravitational field is created in between two mass, especially mass of uh, uh, one bigger mass and another uh, smaller mass, in which the smaller is orbiting around the bigger mass. So during that time, what is the gravitational attraction? So naturally, the bigger mass have a tendency to attract the smaller mass. And then uh, that gravitational attraction force in between two uh, mass are how we can calculate them. So that is what we have uh, discussed last time. And on that, we have uh, summarized with a simple question of uh, Metroid and uh, some um, other uh, small uh, rocket or uh, space probe which sent to uh, check the situation of that uh, Metroid. So, this is the example on that. And this is how the gravitational field is vary with altitude edge. So this is the expression for uh, uh, showing the gravitational field, how it vary with the altitude. So then after we have seen uh, various types of propulsion systems. So uh, some of them are propeller driven, others are turbine driven, uh, some uh, Propulsion system use ramjet and others scramjet, and then rocket propulsion is also another fundamental one, the one we, we mostly concern with in our most of uh, the next lectures. Okay, so uh, these are some of the propulsion means uh, means we in which we are uh, using. And classification of propulsion system, just jet propulsion means air breathing. In general, two types of classification we have, just air breathing and the non-air breathing uh, classification. Then when we come to uh, air breathing uh, system, we have jet propulsion, rocket propulsion. Actually, in rocket propulsion is non-air breathing type. Uh, most jet propulsions are air breathing. So, Duct propulsion is the jet propulsion class that in which it uses surrounding medium of uh, surrounding air as um, um, to ignite the fuel. It uses the uh, surrounding medium or the working fluid from the atmosphere itself. So in general, we classify uh, them as like this, air breathing and non-air breathing type. Then, uh, air breathing type also classified as constant, constant pressure engines and constant volume engines. So, uh, you know, in your uh, thermodynamic course, what are constant uh, pressure condition, what are constant volume condition? So it is, uh, it needs the knowledge of thermodynamics then. In the case of constant pressure engine, we have IC engines and uh, Winkle engines. Uh, and then when we come to constant volume engine, ramjet, turbojet, turbofan, turboprop, or turboshaft. So these are uh, mostly for the uh, aircrafts in which we are operating them around atmosphere. Okay, so uh, 
And then when we come to NAND air bracing engines, uh, these are uh, rocket engines, uh, photons, uh, solar cell. Again, when we come to rocket engine, we have chemical and non chemical engines. Okay. Chemical engines, solid, liquid, and hybrid. Solid propellant, chemi uh, propellant uh, the one which use solid propellant are called solid engines. Actually, solid engines are, are called motors. And the others, like liquid engines, are called, uh, we call them as engine. Okay, the, the, the name by itself is different. For solid propellant uh, system, we call it as uh, uh, rocket motors. But for liquid propellant system, we call uh, liquid propellant engines. Okay, so in the hybrid case, we call also engine. Okay, so these are chemical uh, propulsion systems. And the other are non chemical propulsion systems like electric propulsion system, like these are. Ion, ion propulsion system, uh, nuclear propulsion system. In the case of nuclear, we have fusion, uh, fusion and some radioactive decay also there. And then solar uh, propulsion systems. So we generally classify propulsion system in this manner. So when we come to uh, jet propulsion, what are jet propulsion? So these are uh, a class of internal combustion engines. Okay, so that propel aircraft by means of rearranging, discharging uh, jet flow. Okay, so the air and the fuel are mixed in the combustion chamber. Okay, so excessive or massive air comes into the engine, uh, which goes through the uh, compressors, and then it is compressed towards to the combustion chamber. And there is fuel injection systems, and there are some spark ignition systems in the combustion chamber that feeds fuel from the fuel tanks. And the air is coming through the duct, this the compressor. Uh, consider here in this time the flow of the aircraft or the flow of uh, the vehicle is forward like this. But the air is entering in the opposite direction. Okay, so that will ignite inside of the combustion chamber that produces very uh, high pressure, high temperature gas. At the combustion chamber, uh, air and the fuel uh, together burn and produces high pressure and high uh, temperature gases. That high pressure and the temperature gas comes through and accelerates through the exhaust nozzles. There are, in between there are gas turbines, there are uh, two stage, three stage turbines, here five stage compressors are there, so which accelerates through the narrow uh, converging diverging section known as nozzle. So when it comes out through the nozzle exit, what will happen? The, due to the action and reaction force, according to Newton uh, Sardelow, the vehicle will move forward due to the high uh, pressure uh, ejection of the uh, gases or uh, hot gases through the nozzle. That is the principle behind of almost all, whether it is solid or liquid propellant or other, the principle is almost nearly the same. Maybe the way they are uh, producing hot gas, maybe the way the design of the uh, combustion chamber or the uh, nozzle or the throat, that may be vary from uh, one to another. Okay, so this is the method what we are describing about jet engines. So these are most of the engines that relate to this air breathing system. Okay, these are air breathing. When I say engines, jet engines. Okay, so this is propeller shaft, like helicopters use the uh, uh, turbo shaft engines to drive the uh, system. Uh, small aircrafts like Cessna and others use uh, turbo uh, prop engines, and others have uh, uh, bypass engines having ultra high bus bypass, ramjet, ultra low bypass uh, turbofan engines. So these are most of for aircraft case. Okay, so uh, uh, this is what I have discussed now. Everything is what I already discussed. So 
the thrust produced due to the ejection of high uh, uh, speed, uh, um, high pressure, uh, high temperature exhaust gas. Due to that, we can get a thrust. Thrust is the main thing that pulls the object forward. Okay, so that is uh, the thing. Look, this this shows how uh, the air is entering into uh, the compressor then goes to the combustion chamber. And then after burning, uh, hot gas comes out to the nozzle. So this is kind of simulation which solves. So here, there is a compressor which compresses air from atmosphere. And then at the behind there are uh, ducts. No, um, uh, what you call this? So, by this principle, uh, actually here it is turbine, by this principle, all uh, this type of air breathing engines work. So ramjet, we have seen what is ramjet, what is the scramjet, what is the principle, the Bernoulli's equation like um, uh, pressure plus dynamic uh, pressure plus this uh, uh, we call potential, potential pressure, uh, rho GH, half rho b square uh, stagnation pressure p naught. So using this, um, that is known as Bernoulli's principle, how this type of, actually what is different between other type of engines and the ram and the scramjet engines? The difference is in the ram and the scramjet engine, we have only uh, some diffuser will be placed instead of compressors. Okay, there is no turbine, there is no compressor, but we have diffuser. And in the diffuser, the air coming from atmosphere produces uh, initially oblique shock wave. And then at the some point, it starts to create normal shock wave. Then after it goes with high pressure to the combustion chamber. Okay, so there are some uh, flame holders and other things there. So they will make appropriate combustion in the combustion chamber and it will accelerate through in similar manner to the um, exhaust. So the shape of our nozzle is divergent, convergent shape in uh, most design, convergent, divergent section. Uh, at the middle, there is Mach 1. That means Mach 1 means uh, the sound speed and the, the speed of uh, this um, high temperature guards are the same. But before this, before the uh, throat section, before throat section to the this area, the, it is in the subsonic flow. It goes in subsonic. And then after this point, after throat, it goes in supersonic speed. So that will help us to uh, move our vehicle forward. So this is the principle which we have discussed this uh, last time. We have diffusers, we have nozzles, we have uh, different different uh, components. So that we have discussed. So this is what I have discussed right now, that uh, run scramjet engine. So there are hot section, there are uh, intake compression section, exhaust sections, okay? This is what we have discussed. And we have seen the comparison between the Ramjet and the scramjet, where we can use them. With a high Mach number, we can fly with uh, this type of engines. And what are the limitations of this, uh, each of them? So this is what we have discussed last time. Now we'll go for uh, rocket engines, okay? The second class is non-air breathing engines or uh, rocket engines. So that we will see today how it works. Uh, actually, the comparison between uh, various uh, uh, chemical rockets, actually we'll see rockets uh, just after some moment so that it will be clear for you. And there are some technical words which we can use frequently, okay? So those technical words will be discussed maybe after uh, in the next week. But till that, we can uh, see them, uh, what are the specific thrust, what are the thrust to weight ratio, and other things. 
So this is some table which shows the comparison between uh, performance characteristics. Okay. So we didn't discuss about chemical uh, rotates. So now I don't want to discuss this. After we discuss those things, we, you can come back. I'll send, uh, you can get this slide so that come back and compare this uh, uh, performance characteristics of the uh, uh, each type. This also shows uh, air breathing engine and the rocket engine. Even for comparison, we have to see what rocket engines are. So let's go for the rocket engines. Okay, so today's lesson is on that. So let's discuss in the rest of the world. So let's discuss the rest of the Hello. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Hello. I think base of a middle with a patrol, it is a massage. Okay, then I'll let you know the internet them twice a man. And I'm taking a summer. Yeah. Nice summer. Maybe in the middle of the year, so much more than the government in the middle of the year. Okay. Double and nice to you, yes, a much more one checker. Look, Uh, by disc open or joining other people, none uh, rocket propulsion system is mostly operating uh, in out of uh, uh, the uh, atmosphere. That means it is working in the uh, very rare uh, air condition so that it contains both fuel and oxid oxidizer together in different tanks. Or in the case of solid propellant phase, it contains a cast fuel and uh, oxidizer together in uh, a predefined or pre-designed shape of propellant so that it works as uh, both fuel and uh, oxidizer together. So that no need of uh, taking uh, oxygen from atmosphere and uh, make combustion process. Okay, so uh, this is a simple schematic representation of uh, some rocket. So many component of rocket you can see from here. So that will be uh, another duty, but uh, much of the propellant, much of the rocket part is made of propellants. For example, this, the inner section, this big section is of propellant. The payload is situated around here. The payload means we'll see how much of propellants uh, in a ratio than the whole system. So most of the rockets made with uh, about 98% of the whole rocket is the propellant because it goes to some long distance and the remaining 2% or 1% is the payload and the other thing, okay? So what are those things? Let's see, uh, you can observe from here. Now, basically, what is rocket propulsion? We classify uh, rocket propulsion in different manner. Uh, 
Sometimes we classify it based on the energy source. That uh, if the energy is from chemical, then it is called chemical rocket. If nuclear, nuclear rocket. Or if solar, it is called solar rocket. Uh, we classify it on the base of the function. Okay. Some of them are booster stage, sustainer stage, attitude control, uh, or bit stationing, uh, station keeping. So based on that, we classify the rocket propulsion by uh, their basic function. By the type of vehicle they propel. Sometimes they propel using some aircraft, huge aircraft which took them to somewhere, to some distance. And then uh, they will uh, go after some distance. Some of them uh, propelled using missiles. Okay. Then some of the rockets assisted takeoff. They use some assisted takeoff. And so the classification based on this thing. Again, by their size, by their type of propellant, by their type of construction. Okay. Various constructions and features are there. Uh, the number of rocket propulsion units also okay and method of producing trust okay so uh, sometimes various type of method of the producing trusts are there so that we'll uh, see them in the next uh, uh, discussions how it works still the working principle is uh, the same but what is there it used some thermodynamic expansion of gas in the supersonic nozzle. In this case, we have, for example, if we take solid propellant rocket, the propellant is stored in the um, appropriate position. And once the propellant ignited, then uh, some, uh, uh, let me see. Okay. Okay. So, once the propellant is ignited, that propellant will continuously producing high pressure gas inside the combustion chamber, thereby uh, that accelerates through the divergent convergent nozzle. In similar principle to the previous case, there is uh, a nozzle which is designed with Divergent section, then throat, then after convergent section. In the divergent section, the high pressure gas comes with super uh, subsonic speed, subsonic speed, but with high pressure and with high temperature. And then it comes to very narrow section known as the nozzle or the throat. And there in the throat, it is Mach number one, or that is what we call transonic speed. It comes to the uh, throat with the transonic speed and then try to accelerate forward to the exit with a high speed. So that produces uh, forward momentum. That is the momentum of the vehicle to move forward. So the momentum produces the thrust. That our thrust is the thrust force is equal to mass times the. Uh, mass flow rate of the propellant times the exit velocity of that uh, pot gas. So uh, in this similar approach, uh, the rocket motor also works. Actually, when I say motor, it is for solid rocket. But when we say engine or motor engine, it is for liquid propellant rocket. OK. So this is the method. Look, this is the method. This is the combustion chamber. Look, this is the combustion chamber. It is intentionally designed to have some uh, converging section towards here. When we come to here, it is throat. This is throat region. The narrow region is throat. And then this is exit region. So we have three important sections. The combustion chamber here, uh, let me uh, highlight those things. Where is this okay. okay. We have one important region here. This is called combustion chamber region. 
we have another important region here. It is throat, and the third region is the exit. Or we can sometimes, um, rather than this, we can use uh, some around here. Anyways, number one, number two, uh, two, and three. So these are the regions in which we are more concerned. So this rocket propulsion, uh, propellants are combined in the combustion chamber where the chemical react uh, to form high temperature and the pressure gas. Okay? The chemical burn in the combustion chamber and produces high temperature and pressure gas. The gas accelerated and ejected at high velocity through the nozzle. Okay. Through the nozzle, this is a high velocity gas coming to the uh, nozzle. Thrust uh, force of the rocket motor is a reaction force that experienced by the structure due to the ejection of high velocity matter. So that is what you call F is equal to thrust force F is equal to mass flow rate M times M dot, M dot times V exit. So V exit is the effective exit velocity here. It is effective exit velocity. M dot is the mass flow rate of the high uh, temperature pressure gas. So this is a general equation for the thrust. So D M may be over D means this is the momentum. M mass times velocity is the momentum. So it works in the conservation of momentum. And there are some, uh, uh, exit area minus uh, atmospheric uh, pressure at exit minus pressure at atmosphere times exit area. That area three we can call uh, this relation also there. So this is what you call the thrust production in the rocket. And the uh, Russian science scientist uh, Tsilkovsky who created the fundamental rocket equation. So that rocket equation shows us the motion pattern of the dynamics of the rocket. That is delta V is equal to U ln of M naught over M M. So what is this? Delta V is the velocity. We'll drive this equation later. This equation is very important. That is called dynamic rocket equation. So that we have to drive it. But just for the general knowledge, uh, U is the exit velocity, uh, the velocity of the jet, and M naught is the mass of the whole rocket or the whole propellant plus the structure. But M F means final, means at every moment the propellant is ejecting, means the mass of propellant is decreasing from time to time. So maybe at some moment uh, the final. Um, of um, propellant may be zero, means propellant part becomes zero, but the structure may retain. So, uh, it, uh, so that M naught is the initial mass of the rocket itself, and the M final is the final mass of the rocket after ejection of some amount of, some mass of uh, the propellant. So uh, that relation, this is called uh, generally a Tsilkovsky equation or dynamic fundamental rocket equation or flight equation we call rocket flight equation we call now when we come to uh, rocket propulsion classification uh, we have uh, chemical propulsions under chemical propulsion we have solid propulsion means the one which use solid propellant Liquid propulsion, the one which consumes liquid uh, propellants, and hybrid one means solid liquid hybrid. Okay, so liquid propulsion system use maybe monopropellants. What are monopropellants? What are bipropellants? We will see them because there are separate chapters about this thing. We can see them one by one so that. And when we come to hybrid propulsion, we use solid fuel and liquid pro propellant. No, solid fuel and liquid oxidizer, or solid uh, oxidizer and liquid 
uh, so the use of this um, uh, two things that maybe depends upon our interest. But in the case of this liquid propellant, especially in the case of bipropellant, we use uh, liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen, LOX, and liquid, we call that is LOX, liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen, LH2, and LOX. That means bipropellants. And we use various combination of bipropellants. So we can see them one by one, so no problem. You can understand them uh, later, but uh, these are under. But in the case of monopropellant, we use uh, one propellant. They, it is, uh, mono means one, you know. So one type of propellant which act as both oxidizer and the uh, fuel, okay? So in this case, for example, liquid oxygen, is the uh, liquid hydrogen is the fuel. Hydrogen is fuel. Oxygen is the oxidizer. Oxidizer. Lox is oxidizer. LH2 is fuel. So this combination is known as bipropellant. And the other type of prop uh, propulsion system like electric propulsion, iron propulsion, thermal propulsion, nuclear propulsion are under rocket propulsion class. Okay, let's what the Newton three laws, because uh, in many places we can see Newton law, Newton law. Look, in propulsion system, thrust is generated through application of Newton's third law, it says. So, what are those three? Because uh, uh, how much you are good in physics, I don't know your background. So just to summarize three physics um, Newton laws. The first law is the law of inertia. We call the first law Newton law as the law of inertia. So what the law of inertia states? It says a body will remain at rest or moving at a constant velocity unless it is acted upon by unbalancing external force. Here, there are two conditions. Newton first law states two things. The body at, uh, remain at rest means if the body is stationary, then it will station throughout. Okay? Object at rest means there is no velocity, no initial velocity no final velocity. That means object at rest. Again, the second concept is the body which is moving will move with a constant velocity. If there is no external force, it will move in constant velocity. That means change of velocity is zero. Now, initially, the velocity itself is equals to zero. But in the second case, change in velocity zero. Change in means acceleration is equal to change in P over change in T, as you know. Acceleration signal meant no. Acceleration is equal to delta V, delta V over delta T. So if there is no change in velocity, means acceleration zero. Uh, again, if there is no velocity, V naught is equal to zero then acceleration is equal to zero because acceleration is velocity over time. Okay, so that is the meaning. Uh, so this is very ideal situation that there is no external force means there is no friction of air resistance. There is no uh, many uh, natural phenomena which we encounter with are not considered. Even the gravitational effect and the others are not considered. So. Uh, this is the Newton first law. And when we come to Newton's second law, that is simply the law of motion. What it states, the force exerted by an object is proportional to its acceleration. And then the proportionality constant for this is known as the inertial property of matter is called the mass. So that force is equal to mass times acceleration. That is Newton's second law. So we call the summation of all forces 
on an object is, which is equal to mass times acceleration we call net acceleration and that we can represent uh, acceleration is dv over dt so uh, m dv dt so we can use the momentum conservation principle so that mb mb means momentum means what you know how momentum and the collision please read that part by yourself that head on collision uh, uh, glance collision or uh, kind of inclined collision so a lot of uh, so please read that part so uh, momentum p is equal to mb you know mass times velocity so momentum conservation principle says the momentum before impact is equal to the momentum after impact okay so uh, that is there in the physics so that uh, dm may be over dt now in this case in the case of uh, 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 rocket equation we use the mass flow rate of the uh, ejected gas so that we took dmv and dm uh, dt times ve ve no dt times ve so which gives us m dot ve m dot is the mass flow rate of the ejected gas and v is effective exit velocity so that is newton's second law what is the third law because our rocket will move forward because of the ejected gas so that is the principle of action and the reaction okay for every action there exists action force which is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction that is called newton's second law I think, uh, uh, yeah, damn it, you know. Oh, oh, I'm gonna use the phone down the year now. And the gamma, I was just the kaka wrestle number. Okay, okay, in five minutes, we think, okay, okay, any session. Uh, Newton laws. The three Newton laws are uh, this, and these laws are helpful for us uh, for further discussion also. Now let's come to the propulsion system. Uh, actually, this part is taken from your uh, first textbook. So. Uh, cold gas system monopropellant system, bipropellant system, and solid motor systems. So what are these things? Let's see. Uh, the cold gas system, uh, or we call it as cold gas thruster. Cold gas propulsion system is type of rocket engine which uses expansion of pressurized gas to generate thrust. So this pressurized gas is an inert gas. Here it is. Uh, inert gas, okay. So cold gas thruster design consists of, it needs fuel tank, okay. Uh, it needs some regulating valves. And in the same uh, propelling nozzle, nozzle is also required, okay. Nozzle, uh, thruster, uh, gas tankers, and the valves. So this is the picture taken from uh, the book. Uh, so they are cheapest in the uh, price. This one is cheapest, simplest, and most reliable propulsion system. And the thrusts are predominantly used to uh, 